a very good morning and a warm welcome to all our viewers joining us virtually today. This is Sahil Pastrija from NASCOM. Welcome you all to the 10th edition of NASCOM Annual Technology Conference 2023. This year, the theme is Intelligent Technologies Powering the Future. NADC is a two-day hybrid conference with multiple tracks, each dedicated to a specific aspect of intelligent technologies. The conference will delve into the evolving landscape of future technologies and their impact on businesses, industries, and the society. We have a two-day packed agenda that we have curated with the support of our co-committee members, and we'd like to thank all our members. Uh, you, you, I hope you're seeing them on screen now. With, with their support, we have been able to stitch this all together. So we thank them. Also like to extend special thanks to our esteemed sponsors for their generous support, Platinum Sponsors, EPAM, ServiceNow, NTT Data, GitHub and R1RCM, Gold Sponsors, Colliers and Global Logic, Lanyard Sponsor, Total IT, Skilling Partner, Sector Skill Council and Future Skills Prime, Delegate Back Sponsor, NAV Back Office. Thank you for being an integral part of NATC 2023. Now we are here on day one, which is packed with virtual workshops. The first parallel workshop for the day in Audit 2 is Build, Integrate and Design with Low Code, No Code. And to cover the same, we have Saurabh Singh, Senior Solution Consultant, ServiceNow. This session will share insights on low code, no code solution architecture, how to leverage automated workflows, integrations, intelligent automation, all on one platform, how to govern entire dev app lifecycle, with full visibility into your low-code apps. Now, may I please hand this over to Saurabh? Saurabh, over to you. Thank you. Yep, thank you so much, Sahil. Uh, hi, uh, good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to the session today. Uh, I'll be just shortly starting the screen sharing and then we should be good to go. I hope you're able to look at my screen. Uh, all right. Yes. So, perfect. Thanks, Sal, for the heads up. So, uh, just a quick uh, introduction into what we are planning to do today. Uh, also, maybe on the chat, uh, people can comment whether they attended the same session I had conducted, a similar session rather I had conducted last year. If you were there, a part of that would help me in understanding how many of you are rejoining the session. Although uh, from the from the perspective of today's agenda, what I'll be covering is um, you know what what low code has to offer in terms of how easy it would be to build an application starting from scratch without using much of a code. We'll be using a tool called App Engine Studio today for doing that, which is a service now low code offering. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get into the agenda right. A safe harbor notice. There may be some uh, roadmap related forward looking statements today. So yeah, just a generic slide on that. Uh, pertaining to the agenda specifically for the uh, for today, so I'll be taking like 10 to 15 minutes of your time today to introduce you to create a workflow in the local platform ServiceNow is offering uh, for the local development, how we build these local applications, what goes behind the architecture, why we need to do that and all of that stuff. And then I think uh, we can, uh, get introduced to the lab platform what i'll need all of you to do is keep your laptops ready with a browser open wherein we'll be uh, allocating you some uh, service now instances live instances on which we'll be doing the app development for today what i'll be giving you is a lab guide as well in in parallel so which will be guiding you to uh, uh, take through this entire lab journey lab is primarily divided into four core exercises <coughs> sorry uh, four core exercises and uh, uh, there are a few bonus exercises as well so which will take you through the basics of app building in terms of how you set up a app uh, for example any application that you would have developed in the past or you may not have developed but you would have seen in the past has a few uh, core components like the database your uh, ui layer your uh, automation layer where, where you write the logic or the business logic or business rules and uh, uh, your your security layer where you define you know which part of the which group of the users have access to what part and then we'll be taking you through few of the advanced funda as well so let right, with that uh, in place i think let us get started uh, with i'm joined today with my colleague carmen who will be there on the chat uh, for helping you with any questions that you may have during the session so uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions or uh, you know ping anything in the chat window as well 
Uh, I, as uh, Sahil already, already introduced, I'm a senior solution consultant at ServiceNow. I help my customers, uh, you know, take the hyper automation journey and uh, have the low code platform uh, for their uh, business apps development requirement. Uh, Carmen uh, works out of Hong Kong and uh, works in a similar role, helping the customer in 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 uh, that region in in these aspects. All right. Um, so what uh, we are going to do today is to understand in terms of uh, you know how uh, the app low code applications basically fit in to the larger landscape, right? So ServiceNow uh, has offer offerings around you know uh, workflows which help you basically create um, you know pieces which can uh, move the work around your organization now uh, to move that work what also is required is few applications you know uh, which which basically fill the gap between all those existing running uh, workflows between departments between uh, different sections of the organizations but a lot of times what happens is these application requirements go to the development team we have within our organizations and they do not have enough time at all times to you know build those as fast as we may want to and that is exactly where the low code platform comes into picture wherein it would be so simple to build an application that even a business user who was earlier giving these requirements for developing business applications can now actually go ahead and build these business applications. And that is the exact idea of democratizing the development, not taking uh, keeping development only as, as a niche providing uh, for the, uh, for the uh, you know, developers, but also allow the business users or the uh, non-tech uh, folks to develop those applications for their specific needs. And uh, you know, uh, a lot of times the question comes whether we should be building a software or buying a software. So uh, with this kind of a met methodology within ServiceNow, wherein you have a few of the out-of-the-box offerings as well as the uh, capability to build your custom. So you, you can say yes to both. So you can buy the softwares which, which fit your uh, exact needs, which are there on, on the stack. And you can even build uh, those which are not there and uh, extend all the, uh, the capability of the same <coughs> platform to do that. So. Uh, also, when we are building all these low-code applications, a major challenge that comes to organizations is controlling the app sprawl. So what I mean by app sprawl is, uh, you know, wherein you are controlling the number of applications that exist on the platform. You are also taking a, a note of, you know, which applications are being used more, which are not being used so much and may decide to retire them eventually. So, <coughs> Typically, what happened in organizations, we used to build these Java, Node.js applications, and they reside in different corners and silos of the organization. We don't necessarily have a governance layer where, where we can see all of these apps in a single pane of glass and uh, have a control on, on you know, what is being used, how much, and then maybe decide to uh, retire or enhance uh, some of those applications. But with, uh, with App Engine, you basically get this kind of a... Uh, uh, control a single pane of glass which allows you to build fast with control as well so app engine that we'll uh, experiment today would be the, is that low code platform where developers as well as non-developers can quickly build their applications and support all all their complexities that the business needs and also optimize <coughs> the cost and the risk all right uh, maybe uh, let's uh, uh, quickly dive deep into the 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 lab exercise since we have uh, like two hours at our hand and i'll try to wrap all of uh, all of it in that same time as well so just uh, last slide from the slideware perspective uh, wherein you know uh, what what app engine is and how it will help you to basically reduce your workload and improve your productivity so you have pre-built templates available here, which allows you to quickly roll out apps, which you'll quickly see when once you have your instances up. Maybe also you can uh, comment in, in the comment section in terms of, uh, have you ever used a personal developer instance, a PDI of ServiceNow in the past? Uh, how much exp uh, any of you have experiences on that? Please uh, do a, give a heads up on the chat. It'll be helpful to understand. Um, so also, yeah, we are empowering citizen developers using this and uh, both the low code as well as pro code capabilities can be enabled or used rather on the platform, if I may say so. And all of this with the 
seamless power of the workflows, integrations and analytics that we have to offer. So all of these things on a single platform is what you in, uh, experience. And I think that is what you will be in experiencing in the lab session as well, which is uh, a minute away or so. All right, so what we'll be doing today, just quickly getting into uh, the core agenda part of the day. So we'll be learning the value of the, <coughs> the local platform and uh, we'll be actually building the application for a real world use case, which is a travel request application, a simple uh, workflow based applications wherein you know, an employee goes ahead and requests for a travel and their manager approves it. And what you can do as a, a subsequent uh, action from today's session is you can take back these learnings, share it within your organization in terms of how and what of the low code platforms and maybe you know use it in your daily lives as well. You all can get a developer instance of your own after we end this lab. So towards the end, maybe I'll, I'll be sharing more on that as well. All right, so getting into our use case for today. All right, so um, as I mentioned, it's a travel request use case wherein we are doing this simple workflow which automates the uh, travel request flow a four-step process, I want to go for a meeting, I request it on a portal, my manager approves it, and I'm all set to go. That, that's the simple flow that we are trying to uh, build today. Again, a few housekeeping stuffs. Uh, preferred browsers would be Chrome and Firefox. If uh, you're a fan of Edge, maybe use that. Uh, you can ask questions in the chat window. Uh, we are here to help you. I, I don't yet see any chats coming in, so uh, uh, please uh, let pings you know, few stuff so that we know that you are listening and you're connected. Uh, so, all right. So let us uh, get ahead. And uh, the, the instances that we'll be offering to you will be available uh, till tomorrow end of the day, most likely. Uh, so you can still keep them till tomorrow and uh, use that. So uh, uh, maybe if you can ping in the chat, how many of you have built an application before? Uh, Maybe you have some knowledge, prior knowledge of service now, if you re relate with, with this. Uh, yeah, so Am uh, Amrit asks, is App Engine Studio free to use? On a developer instance, yes, but for, for a pro, you know enterprise needs, uh, there, there would be a licensing requirements for that. But yeah, for, for as a developer, if you want to try out building, you, it's free to use. So again, coming back, uh, so if you have no prior knowledge of service now, you should be good to go for today's session because <laughs> That is not something that we have taken as a prerequisite. You have developed applications on ServiceNow before. That should be great as well. Uh, yeah, uh, all right. So if you're an experienced developer, great. That's not a prerequisite though, but yeah, that will only help you in uh, building things faster. You have experience building uh, using other local tools or maybe even ServiceNow, that's best. Um, you, you'll be very fast in doing all those exercises and maybe you first one to complete all the bonus ones. All right, so let us get into the build. <laughs> what I'll request you to take a note of is maybe take a screenshot of this entire uh, thing that you see on your screen right now. And uh, uh, what you can do is uh, use these links. So first link is the one where you'll be going to your, your instance registration uh, URL. Well, I'll urge each one of you to just take a pick of it on your mobile phones so, so as to keep a later reference so that I don't spend too much time on this slide uh, as well. I'll just uh, let it uh, be for another five seconds while you take the screenshots and then I'll move on. So there are two instance registration links which, which you see on your screen. So I believe uh, there are uh, almost 200 of you there on the platform today. So yeah, uh, each of the links support around uh, 100 instances. So you can choose either of these, uh, maybe start with the first one and in case you get an error, try the second one. And uh, the third link that you see is a lab guide, which would be your low code lab guide for today, wherein uh, you'll be actually seeing the all the details in terms of what you want have to build and how you do that. All right, I hope all of you have taken a screenshot of this slide or a, a pic of this slide on your mobile phones. With the, that in place, maybe, yeah, let me get ahead. So if you, if you can just ping me, if uh, that will help. All right, so um, maybe I would also request, uh, Carmen, if you can uh, 
send a picture of this maybe in the chat if that is possible or maybe i can do that as well let me do that i'll ping it in the chat so that you all have the links with you right away all right i have pinged both the links as well as the reservation codes for you what i'll also do is helping the lab guide link for you as well okay yep perfect so uh, i hope you all uh, would have reached on a screen which looks somewhat looks like this all you have to do is enter your first name and last name here enter your uh, email ids preferably your organizational email id so that it helps us to uh, recognize you later uh, personal should be fine as well but preferably your organizational ones uh, once you register for the lab you would receive a magic link right over here which would uh, you know uh, don't use the username and a password to log into your instance what you can do is use the magic link directly which will take you to a logged in version of the instance so it is signed url which actually takes you to the service now instance with 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 your login in place and you don't have to enter your username and password credentials for there if 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 at any point in time you uh, miss the the uh, url you can again uh, use the same snapshot and the link for the registration that you used again use your first name last name and the email combination that you had <coughs> used previously uh invalid reservation code uh first link is all good yeah carmen is able to do that i believe uh, jatin you should try again so just ensure that you are using the same instance combo so there are two links and two codes that i have shared so just use it in the same sequence uh, jatin all right uh, i believe it is working fine as carmen already confirmed all right so what we'll be doing <coughs> during this lab sorry just a sec i'll take some water all right so um, we'll be we'll be doing these four exercises as i mentioned the four core components of building an applications we'll be building creating a database setting up a database in service now which is basically creating and importing tables uh, the second exercise is on creating a ui form on the portal third one is about creating a approval workflow and uh, the fourth one is all about testing the things that you have already built and it is uh, so while uh, some of you may not be able to you know uh, complete these in the stipulated time frame but you'll have the lab guide as well as the instances to do so after the session as well so that's fine but for those of you who are fast developers who have already experienced some bit of service now <coughs> you would have these three bonus exercises wherein you'll be able to build uh, api connections to your service now instance and use the, that api connection to bring in some data from an uh, external party and use it within service now do few calculations on the fields that you build in your database without using scripts using a formula builder kind of a functionality and you have a workspace builder for building the dashboards which are like a key requirement while building any business application for your organization so all right um, if everything else is sorted hanuman says uh, okay it worked second time so fine i believe all of you are all set already so let us get started so we'll all get started with exercise one uh, wherein we'll be building the app and importing the data um, again i believe you already have the lab guide link with you as well at any point in time when you want me to switch to a browser i uh, let me know i can do that as well and take you to the actual browser and show you things around but i believe uh, you should be able to already do that so lab guide link that i had sent you or which was there on the screen you can use that to get into your lab guide and uh, I'll just brief you to, uh, through what we'll be doing in exercise one. Exercise one is all about uh, creating an app wrapper, which is a travel request app. A lot of you may face issues with the names and the name scope. So at any point in time, if you are facing an issue wherein it says that uh, name already taken or you know for any part of the workflow, maybe the app itself, maybe the tables, maybe the workspace, 
just uh, try replacing uh, the travel request may maybe with the travel request underscore sorab for me or maybe use some prefix use a number use use any combination like you do in a typical g when you're creating a gmail id or, or any email id of sorts right so what happens is there are all these 200 applications or 200 instances which are there in the same global scope and uh, uh, there are other training scopes which also coincide so sometimes you may get an error saying that this app name already exists so use a travel request underscore your name or whatever combination works for you while doing that just a typical error that i wanted to highlight once you are done with the creation of the app wrapper this is how your app wrapper within the app engine would look like any steps prior to this are all guided in your you know lab guide itself so so I think uh, Praveen has a reservation code issue. So I think uh, you, that is there in the link that I posted. Maybe I can post it again in case um, that is something that helps. Let me do that. So yeah. All right. So this this is the app wrapper that you get and wherein you can add your data experience and uh, automation bits. You see already there are a couple of uh, roles which uh, have been created by default. We can add or remove them as required for this for the exercise today. We'll not be touching that much, but maybe as a part of your advanced learnings, you could explore those as well. Beyond this, we'll be creating a new table by add, clicking on add new on the data tab. You can create from an existing table and then use the you know uh, task table to create that few of these screenshots may look slightly different in your exercise as well as on the lab guide because of the latest version that we have upgraded to. So the version that you have is a UTA version. Just to give you an introduction in terms of the inst instance nomenclature on ServiceNow, uh, each, every six months ServiceNow comes up with a new release, if you are not aware already, um, and it is in alphabetical order and named after uh, cities or states typically. So the last one was uh, named as uh, um, Tokyo and the current one is named as Uta. Rather the last one. Uh, we, we are coming up with the with the Vancouver one in, in September as a general availability and it's already also available already as a limited uh, release. So all right, uh, um, that was on the nomenclature part of the service now instances. But anyways, uh, this is what you'll be doing. You'll be extending from an existing table just to also give you a glimpse what you're trying, what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to extend from an existing data model in service now. Task table is a typical uh, application table within service now, which has a lot of uh, inbuilt capabilities in terms of SLAs, tracking, approval tracking, you know, and there are a lot of fields and business rules which automatically come whenever you extend <laughs> this particular application. So yeah, this tool is deployed on uh, Cloud uh, Shubham. So this is a SaaS platform that you're using. So yeah. So uh, yeah, I was talking about uh, the extending extending of the application. So if uh, you are aware about the object-oriented programming concept, oops concepts, so wherein we extend the class <laughs> and inherit the properties of the of the application the same thing is what we are doing in service now when we are extending the task table we inherit all the core capabilities of the task table in in the extended application that we are building today which is the travel request application and we do not uh, need to rethink <laughs> on uh, every uh, small stuff of the application how do i track sls how do i track approvals how do i uh, you know write uh, business rules for whenever the sla is breached uh, you know do this or do that uh, what should be the uh, different uh, options for the state of the of the uh, request completed in progress? What are those basic drop downs that I should be choosing? So all those uh, basic stuff gets extended whenever we extend a typical uh, table from service now, which was the task table. Once you have extended that, we'll add four new fields. Again, these are a few screens I'm uh, skipping, but you'll see a detailed uh, note on that in your lab guide as well. So yeah. Uh, that that should be it and then you, you'll be adding another sheet wherein you'll be uploading a spreadsheet uh, all of you would need access for uploading a uh, uploading and downloading a sheet on your respective machines some of you may be using your office machines and may have some restrictions here so just keep a check on that um, so if if you're not able to do that maybe try using a personal machine of sorts wherein you have the upload and download capability uh, 
Ruby, the reservation code is what I have just posted a couple of chats back uh, for each of the uh, links. So there are two links and two reservation codes that have been shared. Uh, you can use either of them to create your instance. Now, uh, yeah, uh, so we'll be importing the data from the spreadsheet over here whenever we are uh, taking this. And then we'll be getting a airports table in here. What you'll notice is there is uh, there are two fields of latitude and longitude which are empty. These are intentionally put kept empty so that we can use it during during our API exercise for uh, for, for populating these based on the API parameters. All right, and then we'll be using this airports table as a master table for a travel from and a travel to field in our um, master request table later on. A, a typical form builder wherein you know we'll be uh, dragging and dropping the field names from the left to the right. Uh, there may be a slight issue when you are trying to add this. So just whenever you're uh, dragging the field from the left to the right, just try hovering it over the previous field so that it, it would be able to um, come on the screen. So you'll, you'll get to know what I'm speaking about once you do it. Yeah, let us know in case you're facing any issues at any point in time. So let, uh, with that, I think I'll uh, let you uh do the lab i'll just start the timer quickly maybe yeah all right i'll be silent for a bit uh while you all work on your exercise one in case uh you're finding any issues with that Please uh, ping here. Prashan says this instance is too slow. Uh, maybe because of the AWS issue, maybe uh, it says too many instances. So try using the second link, Gaurav. I think you are using the first instance, uh, first link. So first link is already full. I can see that. So the, I in total, there are 120 people who have registered for the instances already. So yeah. Where to get the spreadsheet from? uh so if you are have using the lab guide let me maybe share the lab guide screen for you so i've switched to my <laughs> browser so this is how your lab guide would be looking when you are uh, using that for your work and I think someone was asking, where do you get your uh, Excel? I think it would be somewhere down over here in the airtel uh, airports.xls. Uh, maybe you can just do a search of it, airport.xl. Yeah, so I think somewhere around 0.5 is where you find it, airport.xls.
hope Vishal, you got where to get the spreadsheet from. In case any of you are still facing facing issues, maybe I can drop it in the chat. Let me know if you need to do, need to do that. There is some quantum physics comment by Raj. I don't know. Uh, it is intended to whom, but yeah. Maybe you posted in the wrong window. Uh, Saurabh Kanojia, are you able to still get your reservation code? So reservation code was what was provided earlier. I can post it again for you below.
sorry i think i was speaking on mute um, yeah <laughs> sorry so i think uh, for, for i was trying to exp explain the process for uh, for the developer instance provisioning um, so the idea behind using a developer instance on service now is to um, you know use service now beyond today's lab session so the labs that you have will be there with <laughs> you for another couple of days but beyond that if you want to keep a service now instance with you for a lifetime and keep exploring different stuff on that you can uh, do that here so what i did was i went to this site called developer.servicenow.com and i had logged in over here and you can even sign up with your email id uh, uh, for no cost and you'll be able to reach out on this particular screen and uh, <laughs> then either you can do a request instance or start building and these are the different releases i was talking about uh, the alphabetical order one so s is san diego t is tokyo u is uh, u is uta which is the instance that we are having today the current one is vancouver as well which is um, you know already available but will be generally available i think 1st of september onwards so we, you can just request an instance over here and then you have all these different versions available to choose from and you can choose one and maybe set uh, ask for a request maybe i'll do for vancouver and you request it and then it sets up your instance and you see a, a completion kind of a, a bar over here so it is fulfilling the request right now so it will get fulfilled and then you can use this instance for later uh, parts of uh, time as well when once you're done with today's exercise and you want to further explore the uh, the low code platform for building more and more applications someone was asking is app engine free so this platform developer.servicenote.com is free you can use this for creating any number of applications that you may deem appropriate. It uh, also has capabilities around RPA. So ServiceNow RPA Hub is something that you can explore. You can even test those things on this particular instance. From learning perspective, you can go into the learn section and then you have a lot of learning plans available. Most of them for App Engine are free. Uh, some certifications would be paid obviously but uh, the the learning part is mostly free so you can take those learning plans as well around uh, low code rpa and uh, those kind of things to further assist in your learning journey yeah just wanted to show that while uh, you build the app uh, okay Someone says that there is a, okay, error. So, So uh, Arya Bosley says return date not found in table when it was Have you created uh, that field already? I'm not sure which screen you're referring to. Arya Bosley, let me check for your instance maybe. Okay, Arya, your instance is something I can see. Let me log into your instance and see for you what issue you're facing. Maybe I'll share my screen, browser. I'm just logging into one of the student instances of Arya just to see what issue she is facing. In case any of you are facing the same problem, you can let me know on the chat. So Arya, this is your instance. I'm logged into travel request is the application that you have created. Okay, you have created this table travel request and your error says order resolved need to click saved okay perfect time diff formula is not recognizing in return date okay let us see okay maybe let me 
Where is it? It's up on the field. Sorry, Arya, I'm just adding a test field on your table just to test the formula feature. Is not the syntax used in formula? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. So, time diff is not coming as a valid functionality for you, Sadhguru Prasad. It should come somewhat like this. So, not recognizing return date and departure fields. Okay. So you should have a return date field on your table, first of all. If it is not recognizing, maybe uh, I, I can understand what issue it, you may be facing. So once you add the return date and time, uh, departure date fields, you <laughs> save your uh, table, then come back to the screen, and then you should be able to do that. So right now, if you see return date and uh, other fields are there for ARIA's instance already. So uh, on this instance, we're able to uh, recognize these fields. But yeah. Uh, if uh, we had not saved it, uh, it sometimes uh, shows that uh, these are not available. It isn't auto-populating field if we use a star as a prefix. Why? Uh, I'm not sure if Sandeep, I understood your question fully. It will recognize your custom fields, uh, Sandeep, uh, once you save it. That's what I was mentioning. So once you save your uh, table field, so for example, let me create a custom field here maybe and show it for you live. Okay, I'll just exit. And for example, this test field is one string, string field that I just added, or maybe make it an integer just for the sake of simplicity. So this test field is a custom field that I just added, right? Now I'll add another test formula field, maybe. So this is another field. Let me save it again, just for the sake of simplicity. And now when I go to the test formula field in my side panel and add the formula. So for example, let us say time diff is the same function I want to use and test is the form. So this is the test field that I'm already getting over here. I think that should uh, solve your problem sandeep saving the saving the table just confirm if you are able to um, replicate this on your instance or maybe i can go to your instance and, and look at it yeah. maybe just confirm once you're done <clears throat> just move back to my slide okay did the timer stop So another six minutes before we move to access to again not timing you on the speed of building but uh, just uh, you can continue building while i'll brief you on access to and you can go back to your build part of it
Sampan, you're saying on submitting, I'm getting error. Uh, so that error, it's not an error basically. So the App Engine instance that you're using is a ServiceNow instance, which is a part of the larger ecosystem of uh, the CI CD pipeline, if you uh, are familiar with that term. So a typical ServiceNow instance in an enterprise environment would be one of the dev test prod UAT instances. So, and there is a pipeline which is which, which can be set up in something we call as App Engine Management Center. And uh, once you submit, once you have that pipeline configured, so whenever you are submitting your application, if that is a <coughs> dev instance, it uh, eventually submits that application for a, a test environment to the IT admin. So right now, these instances are standalone instances, and there is no. Um, CICD pipeline, obviously, which has been set up for these, since these are lab instances, not enterprise ones. So <clears throat> you don't have that feature to submit uh, the application right now. But yeah, what uh, Amin was mentioning was to save the particular data field on the form. You need not submit the application itself. Yeah. For, for testing the application, you would need to submit it, yeah, because that is the typical trap we fall into that. Or for having our application live or for testing, we would need to submit, but you don't need to submit your application. You can just uh, create different parts of the applications and test it within the, within the framework. The lab guide actually will help you in doing that in exercise four. Uh, Shreya says, was scared of the timer, but the docs are amazing, could be done without assistance as well. But yeah, just by referring to that. Exactly, yeah, Shreya, that is the idea. And again, yeah, as I mentioned, timer is just for the sake of uh, sanity on time and a time check. Since we have a limited time today and uh, wanted to facilitate this, I obviously I'm not, uh, as you said, it is self-sufficient from the guide perspective, but yeah, for the issues that you may be facing, <laughs> that, is the, that is why I am here. I can see some 135 of you are working on your respective instances. I don't see enough questions. Uh, either it is too simple or I mean, you're all able to follow it. Can you check the link is not working? Okay. I think uh, Sandeep, right? Uh, for you, the download is not working. Maybe your organization has restricted uh, that functionality let me see if you are able to download it from the uh, from these this chat i'm not sure if we can send in files on the chat uh, amrit can we do that i guess not oh maybe let me try So Amrit, what I'm trying to do is, uh, sorry, Sandeep, what I'm trying to do for you is send this airport.xl over the chat. If you are able to receive it, uh, you can try downloading it from there. If not, uh, maybe yeah, that's, that's a network restriction that you're having. So if you can use another another machine, try doing that.
Sanjeev Bharti, you don't see the airport data in the table. Did you ensure to uh, check the import spreadsheet data when you were importing the data? Uh, Carmen has just sent a screenshot a couple of minutes back, uh, highlighting the same. So, Jeev, uh, let me maybe go to your instance and help you. Let me do that. Okay. I don't see you here. Jeeva Bharti Selvaraj, that's your name, I believe, right? Yeah. You can see your instance. Let me try logging in there and help you. So our allocated time for exercise one is over. You can move on to exercise two. I'll just uh, help Jeev uh, with one of his problems and then move on to explaining about exercise two. In the meanwhile, feel free to move on to exercise two or beyond in case you are faster. All right. And maybe what I can do for Sandeep is that I can upload it for you as well. Since your machine does not have a upload feature or a restriction on the download, maybe I can help you with that as well. Sandeep Kumar. So in the backend, actually, I can see all of your instances. And uh, OK, there are a lot of Sandeeps in our session today. Sandeep Sharma, Sandeep Arora, Sandeep Singh. Where is Sandeep Kumar? Sandeep Kumar, I can see you here. 016 is your instance, right? So, okay, maybe let me share my browser screen for you to see. So I'm right now in Sandeep's instance. I'll go to the App Engine Studio. I think Carmen, what G mentioned means is that uh, he is not able to see it within the ServiceNow platform. I mean, he might have failed to import the data. All right, uh, Sandeep, so this is your instance. So let me try adding an airport table right in here, right? <laughs> Port spreadsheet. I'll drop the airport Excel from here. So, uh, Jeev, again, uh, maybe if you can pay a little uh, attention to my screen right now. So this was the place where Carmen was mentioning to import the spreadsheet data, which you might have missed. And I'm, I'm just doing that and we can uh, see. So we are creating a new table, create a new table, continue. So right, all these column headers would come from the table. Continue airports table all right maybe auto number it doesn't matter actually but okay that's fine All right, done. So Sandeep, for you, there is a airport table right now. Jeev, maybe um, you can look at it. I just imported this and this should supposedly have the airport data, which it has, right? And uh, I think, yeah, you fail to use the import functionality in there. So if you do that, uh, you should be good to go. And Sandeep, I think your airport table is right over here. So you can go ahead and do the rest of the steps. I have done that part for you. 
All right, uh, coming back to our slide where. All right, so uh, since I believe all, most of you would have already completed the exercise one, which comprised of creating a table and you know, uh, adding an airports table and adding the field in there. What we'll do over here is create a user experience through the user forms. Again, you'll be using the experience tab to add a record producer. Record producer, you can name whatever you want, but uh, prefer to name it something that you can recall. Raise a travel request is something I would recommend. Once you do that and continue, you will be taken to this particular screen for creation of your uh, form. Again, uh, it may look slightly counterintuitive wherein you again will have to create the same fields that you've created in the table, but uh, think of it from the perspective of if you have designed a typical application wherein you create a database in MySQL and then you are creating a HTML form wherein you are again creating the tags for the respective fields and then creating a mapping get put and all those kind of uh, things with with your backend uh, sql database so exactly that is what we are trying to do over here we are creating that front end form the html form uh, for you so yeah these are the different steps so again the destination is nothing but the table where your record producer will eventually produce a record for why it is called a record producer because every request every travel request in this case would be a record in the service not table and from that uh, perspective, this particular form will be used to create or produce a record rather, and hence the name record producer. Destination is the table where we, it, it should go. Catalog uh, location is the place where, uh, where the uh, you know, uh, catalog would sit in the hierarchy of the, um, of the nomenclature with the service portal or the employee portal in service now. Those are different. Again, don't have to worry about the names. Those are a couple of portals and more which are there in service now where you can actually render your forms or the record producer that you are just building. Once you are in the questions tab, questions tab is nothing but the fields for the table for the form that you want to build. And you can define different sections. For example, information section would be where you'll add your dates and location and a date and location section is what you can add. And then within each of those, you can add a question of type, uh, you know, whichever is mentioned in your lab guide for each of the respective fields, for example, choice field for a travel from and travel to and uh, likewise. All right, and eventually the final uh, uh, form on your uh, portal would some look somewhat like this. Again, to have a fancy image like this, you can add uh, one in, in the initial place. So basically you'll have to add one somewhere over here, sorry. Somewhere over here, you'll have to add your image. If you add whichever image you add, it will, based on that, take you to the respective uh, screen wherein you will have an image like this or an image like this in your mobile as well as a desktop view. So yeah, that is a bit on what you need to do in your access to. And your time starts now. Doesn't really have to be so timed, but yeah, as I mentioned, just run for a sanity check. And maybe what we can do is uh, keep it a little shorter for, for the exercise two and three so that we are able to move beyond as well and uh, maybe give you some more value from, from this entire exercise. Again, uh, just reiterating timer is not to time you, but to time the exercises. And uh, it's not about speed or about doing fast or replicating what is there on the lab guide fast, but to understand what we are trying to do over here. So if you try to understand the overall architecture of how we build applications, right? So we are creating a database now creating and then created few fields and few transformations around that. And now we are creating a, a record producer or a uh, UI element. And after this, we'll be creating a workflow, which will be how my request will flow, flow as an employee to my manager. So that entire cycle is what we are building. So if you can relate it to any other use case that you may have in your organizations or in your real world, you would be able to see larger value out of this exercise. Again, this is not a see and replicate exercise. It's it's aimed to give you a glimpse on <laughs> what are the sorry what are the possibilities and uh, how you can leverage uh, low code for creating your applications. 
and uh, maybe while you're doing this i'll just uh, take you through typical low code applications that you can actually build or think of within your ecosystems around you know, what can be built on on a typical low code application travel and expense is something what we are trying to build in this one it could extend to some some use cases where you want to integrate with your erp as well build on top of sap kind of a procure to pay cycle kind of a purchasing <laughs> contract system or operations related app or a supply chain or you know all of these could be different areas maybe if you want to take a snapshot of this feel free to do that so these could be typical use cases that uh, you may look at again don't want to disrupt your flow from the build part of it but also want to give you some more value out of this uh, large exercise also another stuff i wanted to talk about in this uh, session today and i don't think i'll get time after 12 so would cover that maybe right now was around uh, gen ai so from the gen ai perspective uh, service now is uh, you know enabled on gen ai now so wherein you can build better apps with those chat gpt capabilities right that are available in the market right now and that there are other llm models that are available as well on service now so service now has a partnership with nvidia and hugging face which actually give gives us those gen ai capabilities which allow us to accelerate the app development and also augment the user <coughs> experience how do we do that so faster development through features like text to code text to flow assisted configuration and extension these are a few features around that uh, text to app is something which is phenomenal i'll just show you a quick demo of that maybe uh, uh, five minutes or so and you'll see how uh, what kind of a shift it could do to the ecosystem where a business app user can build an app for their enterprise just by writing a single line of prompt so and and obviously simplify development by assisted uh, deployments through the ai and uh, we can connect to external llm connect using a llm within service now use a case summarization functionality within service now for summarizing different tickets for example there are so many travel requests that come to a manager and they want to summarize it what what this is all about so maybe travel request is not so complex of a use case for a case summarization but even more complex use cases uh, could be incident reporting wherein you know multiple incidents have happened for let us say a flight uh, delay and then you want to go to a root cause analysis you could use this case summarization feature to summarize your notes create work notes knowledge articles uh, if you want to uh, know what that means in service not terminology but those are actually knowledge articles which uh, are basically helping understand employees about basic stuff which is there on their uh, portal and again uh, what this helps eventually all, all of this ai part is to help developer uh, you know gain those productivity times and reduce the overall time they are taking to develop even on the low code and uh, have use ai recommended uh, guidelines for in improving their code having that kind of uh, error handling mechanism those kind of stuff so again won't take too much of time over here uh, we'll just show you a quick glimpse into what the text to app assisted low code uh, no code app creation would typically look like so all right if uh, you were to see it from from a text to app perspective for example so uh, this is this is uh, a typical portal within service now uh, wherein you know you, you can see the search bar which is now enabled with the uh, gen ai now what we call as now assist and uh, this actually integrates with what we call as creator studio and can result into applications which are mobile friendly as well as web friendly so you can see we are just requesting for a simple headshot request over here and our ai is take, taking us through you know different capabilities around all right you want to create a head, headshot capturing application you may need your, to capture their emails as well you may need to have a date picker and it quickly generated all these request form so a quick record producer is what you're creating is what got created through the ai just in a matter of seconds over here and with in a quick conversation it added uh, these extra fields also it also created a workflow for me and it is also giving me multiple options for the pictures that i want to have as a head header in my form and quickly created a catalog request both for <laughs> web and for mobile for me 
right over here and also quickly created a dashboard workspace for me and our end-to-end -end application is like ready to go so again uh don't want you to spend too much time on uh understanding what exactly went in but yeah the idea is to you know show you the kind of capabilities that this entire thing brings in and the possibilities that are there with with, with gen ai so yeah uh maybe yeah I'll, I'll let you continue back to your exercise too and we can come back to this later any comments uh any questions happy to take them what technology has been used behind the low code form creation platform yeah so yeah as as Carmen already answered it's a platform component so particularly uh it, it's a java based technology if you can say but yeah it, it's mostly the service now platform which is being leveraged in the back end so you don't need to necessarily look into that part of it but yeah just from understanding perspective it's mostly powered by java i'm not getting additional details tab after selecting choice in step number 28 in exercise 2 okay visali yes okay let me check visali for you Right, step number 28 is what you're mentioning. Thirty-eight. okay. Exercise two. Uh, sorry guys i just got a call uh, so yeah let me share the browser so step number 38 is what you were re referring to as right uh you're not getting the auto populate issue okay okay Maybe I can go to an instance with Ali. Okay, Shreyas, so give me a second. I'll look into that step 14 as well. I'm on Visali's instance and I'll go to her report producer. Step number 38 is what we are missing. Okay, let me. Let's 
So you're trying to do it, add a travel from field. Okay, I'll try to do it on your behalf. So we are doing a choice, right? Record reference. Travel from right. Okay. Now you already have that where you are departing from. Okay, you don't have it. I think this additional details tab is what you're missing is what you're saying. Maybe you didn't select the record reference or something. So yeah, airport table is what we're referring to. I don't know what it is called in your environment. But yeah, that should solve your problem. What is the pricing or cost for using this platform? I think uh, this may not be a right forum, Sanjeev, to discuss the pricing of this. Maybe we can connect on LinkedIn or something and we can take it from there uh, okay no catalogs are available for me in step 14 what is step 14 sorry step 14 okay that's fine uh Shreyas, you can ignore that um, that won't make a lot of changes but uh, let me see step 14 you're saying in this location, there are not any service catalogs available for you. Uh, you can skip that step altogether as well if you want, but yeah, should be there. One of the three should be the resource, technical catalog, service catalog. Okay. Uh, Sadhguru says, question reason for travel can service now not read the metadata from underlying table field. Okay. Uh, it can it can <laughs> read <laughs> but just in this case we are trying to capture the reason for travel from the user right we need to enter three choices again on the experience form hence asking okay you are asking the the choice field that you created on the on the back end side why is it not reflecting on the front end so again again i would give the same analogy i mean something which you have created in mysql database versus what you're creating on your HTML form, you will be again creating that on your front end. So yeah, right now, this is how it works, but yeah, good suggestion for the product uh, improvement perspective. All right. So then you should have seen a random approach. Yeah, I think Carmen already answered your question. I'm going through questions again. Da -da 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 -da. Gyan says step 26 does not show option questions of type drop down fixed values. It should. Um, I don't see a reason why it won't. Please show step 26. Okay. What's step 26 about? Okay. What we are trying to add a new field for reason for travel. Drop down fixed values. Okay. Da, da, da. Question. I think uh, this one already has a reason for travel. So I can maybe edit this. Yeah. So this is a reason for travel field. It is choice, drop down fixed values. Reason for travel is a field on my table. I'm mapping it to a specific field. I want to call that label as a what is the reason for my travel. Is there anything beyond this? So mandatory is what we want to keep it checked. 
So what's the exact issue here again? If you want me to show it on your instance, maybe I can do that. But yeah, that will take longer, but I, I am not really seeing what could be the problem. Does not show option question subtype drop down. Hmm. So if you're not, if you're doing it in, as a text, you won't see that. Only if you're doing it as a choice, you would see it. So maybe you're choosing a wrong question type. Again, if you can check on that. And let this instance as it is otherwise for Visali. Visali, I hope your question is answered. I'll keep it open until you confirm. All right. It's not showing the reason. So reason for travel should be a field on your table as well, Gyan. Um, so if you were to go back to your table, just uh, also ensure that you have added a field called reason to travel in your table as well. So let me leave this and go back to my table. And uh, this looks to be similar to wave maker. I'm not sure what wave maker is on a man. If, if this is another tool, maybe, yes, I have not seen it. All right, travel request field is, uh, is the table, the request table, right? So request uh, our, our question field, sorry, what we were. The reason for travel field, right, should be here. So if I were to switch to the fields and look for reason for travel, right? So this reason for travel has to be there in my table as well, right? And otherwise, how would I find it there in my catalog record producer? So that that should be the next level of action you should be checking. If if you call your field something else that or if you let us say have called it travel reason the travel reason is what you should be looking for in your record producer question uh, <coughs> uh, did it make sense yeah i'll wait for your answer All right, and maybe another functionality you, I could show you here is the schema view in the table. So uh, th there are multiple tables that we are trying to link over here. And also we had extended the task table, if you remember uh, in the beginning. So the schema view is where you can actually look at uh, what all different uh, tables your base table is linked to. So for example, our table, a travel request table is linked to all these different tables. In the back end, a lot of these uh, relations are not what we have created by default um, by ourselves, but as a extension from the task table, they automatically got created. So this airport table is what we have linked ourselves, which we see in this uh, like blue shade and in this purple shade, whatever you see are all automatically extended from the um, from the task table. All right. So. That was one thing I want to show as well. Then you have the spreadsheet view and the fields view as well. So spreadsheet view is where you'll see your different data uh, elements whenever they the reports get created. Right. Maybe I'll move back to my slides. Hope all the questions were answered so far. For access to users, uh, okay. You can actually let it blank. If you let it blank, that should be good as well. So we are, we are not explicitly um, 
creating any limitations over here for who should be able to see it and who should not be. So we are right now not worried about it, but this access screen, um, I think who asked the question? Uh, Sadhguru. Uh, this, this access screen is more rel relevant when we are trying to build a production grade application and when we want to <coughs> restrict the access for our record producer to a particular user group. So yeah. Uh, you you can leave it as it is for now. Yeah, maybe uh, we are close to eleven thirty already, so. What, I, what we can do is we can, um, some of you would have already moved to exercise three, I believe. And uh, in that interest, maybe let me move on to exercise three and walk you through what we are trying to do there. Again, as someone already pointed, it is self-explanatory, but just <clears throat> to give you a glimpse into what we are trying to do. Um, again, uh, those of you who may not be able to complete the, these exercises in the stipulated time, these instances will be, be with you until tomorrow end of the day. So most likely even today after afternoon, most likely. So you can complete it today, tomorrow, whenever you have time. And uh, you can you can send off questions maybe to me on uh, on my LinkedIn or something. But yeah, just to uh, Give you a glimpse into what we are trying to do in exercise three uh we are trying to create a flow there wherein um, we will we'll also in, you know click on uh, this is run as system user tab with, when we are doing that to allow the approvals to kind of happen automatically in the back end and not really wait for a manager to actually approve it but but we'll see how that particular flow and change of uh, states happen and uh, Beyond this, we'll be able to create this flow. So within a workflow, what you typically see in ServiceNow is a trigger and action combination. Trigger is uh, any trigger which is going to trigger that particular workflow event. So trigger in our case would be whenever there is a new record which crea gets created in the travel request table. And after that, what happens is we ask for approval, ask for approval to whom, ask for approval to the, <coughs> to the manager. And if you see, when we say ask for approval and, and drag the report, record which was created in the trigger section, so on the right, you see all these data pills, which can be dragged and dropped to the respective sections here on the left. So when, when we are dragging that uh, data pill on the left, we are automatically getting all these approval, approval history fields in, in our uh, you know, respective sections. And all of these fields are not what we created, but what we extended from the task table. Now we are referring to the manager of the user who would be approving this particular request. So yeah, um, that would be it. And then we'll ask for approval and then we'll mention a if then situation wherein you know if the manager approves then we'll update the travel request record to say that uh, the request has been completed. Else if rejected, we'll mention that uh, the, it has been closed but incomplete because of the rejection. And th th there are two views you can look at these from. One was the previous view, which is the detailed view, and then this is the uh, chart view or the workflow view of, of doing it. So yeah, uh, I think yeah, we can move on to exercise three whenever we are getting time. Any of you who have completed the bon I started or completed the bonus exercise one, two, or three at uh, this point, feel free to please uh, drop me a note. We'll be happy to walk your instance to other candidates as well. Where are these instances hosted? Uh, yeah, these lab instances are hosted on AWS mostly, yeah. But if you were talking about uh, the customer instances of ServiceNow, so ServiceNow has its own data centers in uh, different geographies where uh, we host our instances, our customer instances are on, on our own data centers. So for example, for Indian customers, we have a data 
data center pair in India as well. And there are, I think, seven plus pairs globally where we can host the instances for our customers. But yeah, for these lab instances, these are not that uh, private and uh, they're hosted on uh, AWS. Dipali says we did not add these fields either in the airport or in table where these. Yeah, Dipali. So um, as I was mentioning, right, we were extending the task table. So when you are extending the task table, let me maybe switch to the browser. When you, we are extending this task table. Okay, let me go to one of the instances. For example, in this one, right, when we extended the task table, we are only creating some four or five fields for our uh, requirement, but the rest of the fields are getting imported or uh, okay, this is the airport table. Maybe the travel request would be the one I should be showing you. So this is a travel request <laughs> request table, which got uh, extended from the task table. If you switch to the fields view, these are the fields. So you did not create any of these fields, right? And I think that is your question as well. So these are the fields which get extended when you extend a core table of service now. And the idea behind doing that is exactly what we saw in that approval field. So for approval, approval history, all these fields and a lot of other closed nodes, closed by configuration item, et cetera, et cetera. These are the fields which uh, we can leverage during our, uh, our business process. And uh, if you, I, which is not the scope of today's discussion, but if you were to go into the policy and rules part of it as well, there are a lot of access control lists, uh, client script business rules that also get added as a part of uh, uh, the the import that we did from the task table. So this was a task table that we had inherited, and as as a matter of that inheritance, all of these uh, different scripts, UI policies, etc., have got added. Again, what these refer to and what uh, we we can use these for. So these are primarily for kind of a pro development where we want to write some scripts and uh, etc. on on top of the low code application that we build. So this this is where uh, we can leverage these. So yeah, I think that would have answered your question. And and just to filter all the fields that you have created. So you can also choose this option called hide extended fields. So that will only show you the fields that you actually had created as a part of your workshop. And uh, yeah. Does that answer? Getting an error while trying to add return date in exercise two. What is the error that you're getting Piyush?
Yeah, timer is not working because I was on a different screen. Okay. Yeah, I think it pauses when I switch screens. You say the catalog item trace the travel request has one other variable with the same name associated with it. Keep the names of variable associated with the catalog. Pavin Kumar, uh, you're saying that your travel from option is not coming coming in exercise two step thirty eight. Uh, can you check if you added uh, the travel from option in your uh, primary table, the request table itself? Uh, airport table is taking long to import for Drover. Okay, Dhruv, I can check that for you maybe. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you are on this instance or the other one. Not on this one for sure. Dhruv, Dhruv Vardhan, right? Uh, also, Carmen, if you want, you can actually speak up and uh, answer to some of the queries if you want. Uh, we have, I think, added you on the spotlight. Okay, I will then. <laughs> I'll just help you with the other queries in the parallel. So whose instance was this? Sorry, Dhruv, right? So Dhruv, okay, you are saying you are facing issues. So maybe because of some restrictions in your environment to upload an Excel sheet or something, maybe I'll just try to add it on your behalf if that is okay. Hope that should be fine with you. So I'm just importing a spreadsheet for you. Uh, drop the airports here import the spreadsheet data for you as well a new table and uh, yeah, create a table new table and continue should i add or can I skip this step uh, actually parveen you would need that uh, travel from field uh, ideally you should have created it in your travel request as well then only it will show up as i was mentioning in a separate exercise right if you have not created it, that field in your base table, you won't find it on your record producer either. So if you can check, I'll, I'll just quickly show you what I mean. I'll just complete this adding of uh, airport table as well. For Dhruv. Dhruv, I think you would have 
taken longer on on this particular screen where it was adding data so let's see if it is faster for me and uh, i think it's done so yeah drop for you the airports table is i think up and running and uh, this is how the data looks like yeah and for mr Perveen, what i was intending to tell you was in your travel request table you need to have a travel from field which you see is not available on your record producer so for example if there is a travel from field here which is i don't see so maybe the person has added a from so similar to similar to i think what uh, has happened here right there is no travel from and travel to field i think because it, it is the next step after the adding the airport table maybe the will be adding it so if you don't have that travel from and travel to field here you won't be able to add that in your record producer either so that is what you need to check you can skip it but yeah that that is a critical step uh, for creating any any functionality out of this application that we are building uh mohin has a problem i believe uh, okay can i show him something on the screen carmen sounds good Uh, top horizontal bar black and color ugly so what exactly i i sorry i didn't get the issue of moin come and if you can help me with um that. so um the user can't find a global search um so what they need to do is go back to the main service now screen which is the original tab uh, um and then there is like the search little right, icon one. yeah if you click into it then you can type the name uh, right 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 and yeah maybe for everyone um if you are finding issue in going back to your home instance, all this after the dot com is what you need to get rid of. And uh, once you enter, you would be taken to your <coughs> home instance. <coughs> and I think that is what uh, Carmen is referring to, the, the global search right over here. All right, hope that helps. So essentially, the core part of the exercises that we were to cover, we have already uh, done till almost, you know, exercise three. Exercise four is mostly about testing it. Exercise uh, four, beyond exercise four are three bonus exercises, which were to do with your API connections, etc. I wanted to hear someone to talk about their bonus exercises. If you have done it already, it will be a great show for, for the rest of uh, the people here. I can actually log into your instance and show that. If not, uh, I would uh, leave you with, with those three bonus exercises as your homework and which you can test on your uh, on your uh, instances later on as well. How can I access this edition on the NASCOM annual technology conference? Okay, I am not sure. Uh, so no, I, I am not sure what your question is about. How can you access the edition of the NASCOM ATC 2023 organized by? So you are, you intend to say, how can you access us during the event tomorrow in person? We will be on a stall in, in so, I mean, mark the service now there. I'll be there in person as well. Happy to meet you there, but I think, uh, there may be something more to your question. If you can clarify, that will be helpful. Again, just asking in case anyone has already moved to a API exercise, you can please ping us. We'll be happy to showcase your work. <laughs>
All right, so while we are 13 minutes away from the official closing of the workshop today, uh, well, well, I'll uh, let you all continue working on your respective uh, exercises and uh, we'll be happy to help any of you over the uh, over LinkedIn or something later on because I believe uh, all your issues were not sorted yet. So I can do that is post my LinkedIn ID in here. Hopefully this is correct. Yeah, it is. So you can just connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know any issues if you face uh, in there. Maybe give it to you as a link. But yeah, before I leave you for today, I wanted to also leave you with this a small slide, which you can take a snapshot of and uh, you know use it for uh, these. These are the three QR codes which you can leverage actually to sign up for any further workshops or even you know for getting your PDI. PDI, how to get it? I explained to you during the session today. But yeah, this would be a ready reference for directly getting over there. So maybe you can take a snapshot of this and keep it for your later reference. Also, if you want to, uh, uh, if you are interested and want to get certified as a service node developer, uh, please feel free to use this uh, third QR code to go to the developer path and uh, look at more details on those lines as well. Also, just to you know, also you know, while summarizing the overall things that we were trying to do today and building this overall application. So what all we leveraged and what all uh, steps we took so just to walk you through that from a uh, you know uh, how we can build fast with low code and what are the different functionalities that are available to us to help doing this. So App Engine Studio is exactly what we use today for uh, building this entire thing. Table Builder also is something we leveraged. Workspace Builder is again a part of the bonus ex exercise three which you can uh, try for yourself again, if you have not already. And uh, then there are all these platform tooling capabilities around workflow integrations, UI, UX, pre-built components and experiences that we leverage to create this larger low-code uh, application. Now, uh, coming to uh, the, the governance bit of it, as I was mentioning initially also, there, are, there is a workflow to it, which, which takes care of your entire life cycle of the application right from the intake to the retirement of the application. So wherein you get to control the app sprawl that you create with the application, you know, uh, you, you uh, intake a developer, a citizen developer into your ecosystem, then you allow them to build also with a delegated capability wherein they can delegate some part of the build to some other developer within the ecosystem. Then there is a validation bit of it wherein, you know, I was mentioning the CI CD part of it, wherein when you submit the application, it goes for validation to your IT admin, wherein um, the entire test the dev cycle can run. So all those instances can get configured in dev test uh, broad framework. Uh, as a uh, you know, see a typical CI/CD pipeline, and then you deploy it and maintain the application, and can continuously monitor and, if required, retire the application eventually. And all of this with 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 capabilities around app scoping. So what we are creating today is a scoped app, uh, which has its own scope. What I mean by that is there are two kinds of application within ServiceNow that you can create. One is a global application, which are a typical out of the box applications that you might have heard on ServiceNow, ITSM. ITOM, those kind of applications. And then there are these scoped applications which are their own, uh, live in their own contained scope and do not really, uh, uh, you know, uh, create any hindrance into operations of any other op application on that. And at the same time, uh, remain in the larger service now instance. So you do not create an app sprawl and also do not create a, uh, any hindrance with the existing applications in there. Pipelines and deployment, I already talked about. CICD, we talked about as well. Automated testing also is something that, that gets uh, triggered whenever you um, move your app across the CICD pipeline from app to test or test to dev. Uh, sorry, dev to test or test to prod. And uh, yeah, likewise, there is an instance. Once your instance in, is live, you have an instance scan capability wherein you can keep a monitoring of your health status of, of your application. And uh, also just to uh, uh, give a quick uh, glimpse into what we are doing here on uh, App Engine, we uh, give a complete 
capability on one platform to create a uh, rich application. So what we did today was pretty simple in terms of adding tables and forms and logic and workflows. But beyond that, uh, you can use create a, your custom portals, mobile experiences, chatbots on service now. You can add it to a uh, connect it to an external RPA or even use ServiceNow's own RPA. Actually, you, I would encourage you to uh, look more on that in our developer site as well, and uh, take take more inputs around that. And then AI ML capabilities is also something which is inbuilt on the platform and get leveraged in different components of the of the ecosystem. And all of these can also work in tandem with what I showed from the Gen AI perspective in the generative AI world, wherein you can use the summarization features, you can use <coughs> text to app kind of features eventually, which is in the roadmap, obviously not live right now. But yeah, that is where we are getting, wherein with a simple uh, text, uh, uh, you can actually roll out a complete full fledged application. And uh, obviously real-time discovery and mining of improvements that can be done to optimize the application that is already present so all of that for entire cycle gets uh, gets delivered from from end to end uh, over here again yeah uh, happy to take any questions at this point or even later on uh, we can connect on linkedin as well and uh, yeah I, I, i'll let you continue building your exercise but all, wanted to logically uh, take this session to a conclusion as well before we wrap up all right so yeah continue with the exercise three or four whichever you are on right now happy to take uh, any questions on any exercise where you may be stuck at this moment yeah And Carmen, if I will, um, if you also want to summarize a bit uh, and maybe add to what I just mentioned, please, please uh, feel free to. So Carmen is joining us from Hong Kong today uh, and uh, was helping us with all your lab questions, etc. So does each OpenAI tool falls in one or both categories as an encoder or decoder? Um, I am not sure if I got your question fully per, per Visha. But uh, I mean, I can talk about ServiceNow's OpenAI capabilities. Um, so yeah, ServiceNow has integration to OpenAI in general from the external world in terms of the chat GPT kind of a Azure in integration and also has its own now LLM model, which it can integrate to. I'm not sure what your question entails further on the encoder or decoder side. Uh, if you can elaborate maybe slightly more, I'll be able to help. Sandeep, sure, uh, we'll be happy to meet you tomorrow on site. Uh, Yes, Saurabh, uh, I, I see no more questions in the tab. Can you hear me, Saurabh? I can hear you, Sahil, yeah, very well. Perfect. So I guess uh, uh, there aren't many new questions, as I said, uh, so uh, we can conclude this uh, session. So uh, I'd like to thank you and uh, Carmen for uh, this engaging and insightful session on low code, no code, Saurabh. Uh, I, I believe that our viewers are uh, benefited from the, from your session and they gain deeper understanding of this evolving technology. So thank you once again. Uh, to our viewers, uh, we have come to the end of uh, first panel workshop in Audi 2. Second workshop uh, will uh, start at 2 p.m. 
We also have a virtual expo space wherein you'd see some of the latest innovative services and solutions being showcased by various tech organizations. So please do take out some time and explore the same. We have another parallel workshop going live in Audi one on Gen AI. If you want to join, you can join that. Uh, we'll, we'll catch up. We'll be back after a short break uh, at 2 p.m. Thank you so much.